welcome back to my channel. If you're a subscriber, if you're not, please do me a favor and subscribe. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you share these videos, please. And hit the notification bell. We are going to go into the book of Numbers. I just finished Leviticus last time, so now we're going to do Numbers. So we're going to start in chapter 1. Um, I'm just going to open in a quick prayer. Father God, please... Please be with everyone tonight, I ask in Yeshua's name, Lord, that you would help everyone to understand your word and that you would speak to whoever it is that needs to hear these things that I'm about to read. And I ask that you would be with me and I ask that you would guard the computer, guard the internet, guard everything from any interference. In Yeshua's name, thank you. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start with chapter 1. And please be patient with me because I don't have a mouse. I'm using the pad on the touchpad on the computer. Sometimes it goes too far and I have to go back. <clears throat> okay, so chapter 1 is called the census. The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai on the first day of the second month of the second year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. He said, take a census of the whole Israelite community by their clans and families, listing every man by name, one by one. You and Aaron are to count according to their divisions, all the men in Israel who are 20 years old or more and able to serve in the army. One man from each tribe, each of them the head of his family, is to help you. These are the names of the men who are to assist you from Reuben, Elizur, son of Shadur, from Simeon, Shalemiel, son of Zerishadai, from Judah, Nishan, son of Amminadab, from Issachar, Nathaniel, son of Zuar, from Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helon, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, son of Amihu, Am Amihad. From Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Hadahazur. From Benjamin, Abedan, son of Gideonai. From Dan, Ahizer, son of Amishadai. From Asher, Hagil, son of Okran. From Gad, Eliaspha, son of Duel, from Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan. These were the men appointed from the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the clans of Israel. Moses and Aaron took these men whose names had been specified, and they called the whole community together on the first day of the second month. The people registered their ancestry by their clans and families. And the men, 20 years old or more, were listed by name, one by one. As the Lord commanded Moses, and he counted them in the desert of Sinai. From the descendants of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, all the men, 20 years old or more, who were able to serve in the army, were listed by name, one by one, according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Reuben was 46,500. From the descendants of Simeon, all the men, 20 years old or more, who were able to serve in the army were counted and listed by name, one by one, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Simeon was 59,300. From the descendants of Gad, all the men, 20 years old or more, who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Gad was 45,650. From the descendants of Judah, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Judah was 74,600. From the descendants of Issachar, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. 
The number from the tribe of Issachar was 54,400. From the descendants of Zebulun, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Zebulun was 57,400. From the sons of Joseph, from the descendants of Ephraim, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Ephraim was 40,500. From the descendants of Manasseh, all the men 20 years old and more who were able to serve in the armies were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Manasseh, Manasseh was 32,200. From the descendants of Benjamin, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Benjamin was 35,400. From the descendants of Dan, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number of the tribe of Dan was, was 62,700. From the descendants of Asher, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Asher was 41,500. From the descendants of Naphtali, all the men 20 years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The numbers from the tribe of Naphtali was 53,400. These were the men counted by Moses and Aaron and the 12 leaders of Israel, each one representing his family. All the Israelites, 20 years old or more, who were able to serve in Israel's army were counted according to their families. The total number was 603,550. The ancestral tribe of the Levites, however, was not counted along with the others. The Lord had said to Moses, you must not count the tribe of Levi or include them in the census of the other Israelites. Instead, appoint the Levites to be in charge of the tabernacle of the covenant law over all its furnishings and everything belonging to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They are to take care of it and encamp around it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down. And whenever the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall do it. Anyone else who approaches it is to be put to death. The Israelites are to set up their tents by divisions, each of them in their own camp under, this, under their standard. The Levites, however, are to set up their tents around the tabernacle of the covenant law so that they, my wrath will not fall on the Israelite community. The Levites are to be responsible for the care of the tabernacle of the covenant law. The Israelites did all this just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now we're going into chapter 2. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, the Israelites are to camp around the tent of meeting, some distance from it, each of them under their standard and holding the banners of their family. On the east toward the sunrise, the divisions of the camp of Judah are to encamp under the standard. The leader of the people of Judah's, Judah is Nishan, son of Amminadab. His division numbers are 74,600. The tribe of Issachar will camp next to them the leader of the people of Issachar in Nathaniel, son of Zuar. His division numbers 54,400. The tribe of Zebulun will be next. The leader of the people of Zebulun is Eliab, son of Helon. His division numbers 50, 57,400. All the men assigned to the camp of Judah, according to their divisions, number 186,400 they will set out first. On the south will be the divisions of the camp of Reuben under their standard. The leader of the people of Reuben is Eliezer, son of Shadur. His division numbers 46,500. 
The tribe of Simeon will camp next to them. The leader of the people of Simeon is Sh Shalumiel, son of Zerishadai. His number, his division number is 59,300. The tribe of Gad will be next. The leader of the people of Gad is El Eliaspha, uh, son of Duel. His division numbers 45,650. All the men assigned to the camp of Reuben according to their divisions. Number 151,450, they will set out second. Then the ten of meeting in the camp of the Levites will set out in the middle of the camps. They will set out in the same order as they encamp, each in their own place under their standard. On the west will be the division of the camp of Ephraim under their standard. The leader of the people of Ephraim is Elishama, son of Am Amahud. His division numbers 40,500. The tribe of Manasseh will be up next to them. The leader of the people of Manasseh is Gamaliel, son of Pedazur. His division numbers 32,200. The tribe of Benjamin will be next. The leader of the people of Benjamin is Abidan, son of Gideonai. His division numbers 35,400. All the men assigned to the camp of Ephraim, according to their divisions, number 108,100. They will set out third. On the north will be the divisions of the camp of Dan under their standard. The leaders of their people of Dan is Ahizer, son of Amashadai. His division numbers 62,700. The tribe of Asher will, come, will camp next to them. The leader of the people of Asher is Pagil, son of Okran. His division numbers 41,500. The tribe of Naphtali will be next. The leader of the people of Naphtali is Ahira, son of Enan. His division numbers 53,400. All the men assigned to the camp of Dan number, Dan number 157,600. They will set out last under their standards. These are the Israelites counted according to their families, all the men in the camps by their division numbers, 603,550. The Levites, however, were not counted along with the other Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. So the Israelites did everything the Lord commanded Moses. That is the way they encamped under their standards, and that is the way they set out, each of them with their clan and family. Okay, now we're going to go to chapter 3. This is the account of the family of Aaron and Moses at the time the Lord spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai. The names of the sons of Aaron were Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Those were the names of Aaron's sons, the anointed priests who were ordained to serve as priests. Nadab and Abihu, however, died before the Lord when they were made an offering with unauthorized fire before him in the desert of Sinai. They had no sons, so Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests during the lifetime of their father Aaron. The Lord said to Moses, Bring the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron, the priest, to assist him. They are to perform duties for him for the whole community at the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle. They are to take care of all of the furnishings of the tent of meeting, fulfilling the obligations of the Israelites by doing the work of the tabernacle. Give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are the Israelites who are to be given holy to him. Appoint Aaron and his sons to serve as priests. Anyone else who approaches the sanctuary is to be put to death. The Lord also said to Moses, I have taken the Levites from among the Israelites in place of the first male offspring of every Israelite woman. The Levites are mine. 
for all the firstborn are mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set apart for myself every firstborn in Israel, whether human or animal, they are to be mine. I am the Lord. The Lord said to Moses in the desert of Sinai, count the Levites by their family and clans, count every male a month old or more. So Moses counted them as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. These were the names of the sons of Levi, of Levi. Gershon, Gohath, and Merari. These were the sons, these were the names of the Gershonite clans. Libni and Shimei. The Kohathite clans, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The, Mer the Merarite clans, Mali and Mushi. They were the Levite clans according to their families. To Gershon belonged the clans of the Liberti Liberites and Shimeites. They were the Gershonite clan. The number of all the males a month old or more who were counted was 7,500. The Gershonite clans were to camp up the west behind the tabernacle. The leader of their families of the Gershonites was Elie Eliasaph, son of Lael. At the tent of meeting, the Gershonites were responsible for the care of the tabernacle and tent, its coverings, the curtain at the entrance of the tent of meeting, the curtains in the courtyard, the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard surrounding the tabernacle and altar, and the ropes and everything related to their use. To Kohath belonged the clan of the Amorites, Itharites, Heber Hebonites and Uzilites, these were the Kohathite Co clans. The number of the males a month old or more were 8,600. The Kohathites were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. The, Koh the, the Kohathite clans were to camp on the south of the tabernacle. The leader of the families of the Kohathites Kohathite clan was Elzaphan, the son of Uziel. They were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the articles of the sanctuary used in ministering, the curtain, and everything related to their use. The chief leader of the Levites was Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest. He was appointed over those who were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. To Merari belonged the clan of the Malites and the Mushites. These were the Merarite clans. The number of all the males a month old or more were counted was 6,200. The leader of the families of the Merarite clans were Zuriel, son of Abihel. They were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. The Merarites were appointed to take care of the frames of the tabernacle, its crossbars, posts, bases, all its equipment, and everything related to their use, as well as the posts of the surrounding courtyard with their bases, tent pegs, and ropes. Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp to the east of the tabernacle toward the sunrise in front of the tent meeting. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary on behalf of the Israelites. Anyone else who approached the sanctuary was to be put to death. The total number of Levites counted at the Lord's command <clears throat> by Moses and Aaron according to their clans, including every male a month old or more, was 22,000. The Lord said to Moses, count all the firstborn Israelite males who are a month old or more and make a list of their names. Take the Levites for me in place of the firstborn of the Israelites and the livestock of the Levites in place of all the firstborn of the livestock of the Israelites. I am the Lord. So Moses counted all the firstborn of the Israelites as the Lord commanded him. The total number of firstborn males a month old or more listed by name was 22,273. The Lord also said to Moses, <clears throat> take the Levites in place of all the firstborn of Israel and the livestock of the Levites in place of their livestock. 
The Levites are to be mine. I am the Lord. Give me one second, guys. To redeem the 273 firstborn Israelites who exceed the number of the Levites, collect the five shekels for each one according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. Give the money for the redemption of the additional Israelites to Aaron and his sons. So Moses collected the redemption money from those who exceeded the number redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the Israelites, he collected silver weighing 1,365 shekels. Sorry, you guys, I'm just trying to get this to work. Okay. Moses completed, wait, Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons, and as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. Okay. I apologize for that. Okay, on to chapter 4. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Gotta love pop-ups. Okay, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take a census, a census of the Kohathite, Kohathite branch of the Levites by their clans and families. Count all the men from 35, from 30 to 50 years of age who come to serve in the work at the tent of meeting. This is the work of the Kohathites at the tent of meeting. Take care, the care of the most holy things. When the camp is to move, Aaron and his sons are to go in and take down the sh shielding curtain and put it over the Ark of the Covenant Law. They are to cover the curtain with a durable leather spread, a cloth of solid blue over that and put the whole poles in place. Over the table of the presence, they are to spread a blue cloth and put on the plates, dishes, and bowls, and the jars for drink offerings. The bread that is continually there is to remain on it. They are to spread a scarlet cloth over them, cover that with the durable leather, and put the poles in place. They are to take a blue cloth and cover the lampstand that is for light together with its lamps, its wick trimmers and trays, and all its jars for the olive oil used to supply it. They are to wrap it all and its accessories in a covering of the durable leather and put, put it on a carrying frame. Over the gold altar they are to spread a blue cloth and cover that with the durable leather and put the poles in place. They are to take the articles used for ministering in the sanctuary, wrap them in a blue cloth, Cover that with the durable leather and put them on a carrying frame. They are to remove the ashes from the bronze altar and spread a purple cloth over it. Then they are to place on it all the utensils used for ministering at the altar, including the fire pans, meat forks, shovels, and sprinkling bowls. Over it they are to spread a covering of the durable leather and put the poles in place. After Aaron and his sons have finished covering the holy furnishings and all the holy articles, and when the camp is ready to move, only then are the Kohathites to come and do the carrying. But they must not touch the holy things or they will die. The, Koh the Kohathites are to carry those things that are in the tent of meeting. Eleazar's son of Aaron, the priest, is to have charge of the oil for the, for the light the fragrant incense, the regular grain offering, and the anointing oil. He is to be in charge of the entire tabernacle and everything in it, including its holy furnishings and articles. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, See that the Kohathite tribe clans are not destroyed from among the Levites, so that they may live and not die when they come near the most holy things. Do this for, for them. 
Aaron and his sons are to go into the sanctuary and assign to each man his work and what he is to carry. But the Co Kohathites must not go in to look at the holy things, even for a moment, or they will die. The Lord said to Moses, Take a census also of the Gershonites by their family and clans. Count all the men from 30 to 50 years of age who come to serve in the work at the tent of meeting. This is the service of the Gershonite clan in their carrying and other work. They are to carry the curtains of the tabernacle, that is, the tent of meeting, its covering and its outer covering of durable leather, the curtains for the entrance to the tent of meeting, the curtains of the courtyard surrounding the tabernacle and altar, the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ropes and all the equipment used in the service of the tent. The Gershonites are to do all that needs to be done with these things. All their service, whether carrying or doing other work, is to be done under the direction of Aaron and his sons. You shall assign to them as their responsibility all they are to carry. This is the service of the Gershonite clans at the tent of meeting. Their duties are to be under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest. Count the Merarites by their clans and families. Count all the men from 30 to 50 years of age who come to serve the work at the tent of meeting. As part of their service at the tent, they are to carry the frames of the tabernacle, its crossbars, posts, and bases, as well as the posts of the surrounding courtyard with their bases, tent pegs, ropes, all their equipment, and everything related to their use. Assign to each man the specific things he is to carry. This is the service of the Mirrorite clans as they work at the tent of meeting under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest. Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of the community counted the Kohathites by their clan and families, all the men from 30 to 50 years of age, who came to serve in the work at the tent of meeting, counted by clans, were 2,750. This was the total of all those in the, in the Kohathite clans who served at the tent of meeting. Moses and Aaron counted them according to the Lord's command through Moses. The Gershonites were counted by their clan and families. All the men from 30 to 50 years of age came to serve in the work of the tent of meeting. Counted by their clans and families were 2,630. This was the total of those at the Gershonite clans who served at the tent of meeting. Moses and Aaron counted them according to the Lord's command. The Merorites were counted by their clans and families, all the men from 30 to 50 years of age who came to serve in the work at the tent of meeting counted by their clans were 3,200. This was the total of those in the Merorite clans. Moses and Aaron counted them according to the Lord's command through Moses. So Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of Israel counted all the Levites by their clans and families, all the men from 30 to 50 years of age, who came to do the work of serving and carrying the tent of meeting, numbered 8,580. At the Lord's command through Moses, each was assigned his work and told what to carry. Thus they were counted as the Lord commanded Moses. Now we're going to move on to chapter 5. The Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to send away from the camp anyone who has a defiling skin disease, a discharge of any kind, or who is ceremonially unclean because of a dead body. Send away male and female alike. Send them outside the camp so they will not defile their camp where I dwell among them. The Israelites did so. They sent them outside the camp. They did just as the Lord had instructed Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Any man or woman who wrongs another in any way, 
and so is unfaithful to the Lord is guilty and must confess the sin they have committed. They must make full restitution for the wrong they have done. Add a fifth of the value to it and give it to the person they have wronged. But if that person has no close relative to whom restitution can be made for the wrong, <clears throat> the restitution <coughs> excuse me, belongs to the Lord. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And must be given to the priest, along with the ram with which atonement is made for the wrongdoer. <coughs> I need a drink. Hold on. All the sacred contributions the Israelites bring to the priest will belong to him. Sacred things belong to their owners, but what they give to the priest will belong to the priest. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, so that another man has sexual relations with her, and this is hidden from her husband, and her impurity is undetected, since there is no witness against her and she has not been caught in the act, and if feelings of jealousy come over her husband and he suspects his wife and she is impure, or if he is jealous and suspects her, even though she is not impure, <clears throat> then he is to take his wife to the priest. He must also take an offering of a tenth of an ephah of barley flour on her behalf. He must not pour olive oil on it or put incense on it because it is a grain offering for jealousy, a reminder offering to draw attention to wrongdoing. The priest shall bear, shall bring her and have her stand before the Lord. Then he shall take some holy water in a clay jar and put some dust from the tabernacle floor into the water. After the priest has had the woman stand before the Lord, he shall loosen her hair and place it place in her hands the reminder offering, the grain offering for jealousy, while he himself holds the bitter water that brings a curse. Then the priest shall put the woman under oath and say to her, If no other man has had sexual relations with you, and you have not gone astray and become impure while married to your husband, may this bitter water that brings a curse not harm you. But if you have gone astray while married to your husband and you have made yourself impure by having sexual relations with a man other than your husband, here the priest is to put the woman under this curse. May the Lord cause you to become a curse among your people when he makes your womb miscarry and your abdomen swell. May this water that brings a curse enter your body so that your abdomen swells or your womb miscarries. Then the woman is to say, Amen, so be it. The priest is to write the curses on a scroll and then wash them off into the bitter water. He shall make the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse, and this water that brings a curse and causes bitter suffering will enter her. The priest is to take from her hands the grain offering for jealousy, wave it before the Lord, and bring it to the altar. The priest is then to take a handful of the grain offering as a memorial offering and burn it on the altar that he, that he is to have the woman drink the water. If she has made herself impure and been unfaithful to her husband, this will be the result. When she is made to drink the water that brings a curse and cause bitter suffering, it will enter her, her abdomen and swell and her womb will miscarry and she will become a curse. If, however, the woman has not made herself impure but is clean, she will be cleared of guilt and will be able to have children. This, then, is the law of jealousy when a woman goes astray and makes herself impure while married to her husband. Or when feelings of jealousy come over a man because he suspects his wife, the priest is to have her stand before the Lord and is to apply this entire law to her. The husband will be innocent of any wrongdoing, but the woman will bear the consequence of her sin. Chapter 6 The Lord said to Moses, <clears throat> Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord as a Nazarene, or as a Nazarite, they must abstain from wine and other fermented drink 
They must not drink vinegar made from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. As long as they remain under the Nazarite vow, they must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or the skins. During the entire period of the Nazarite vow, no razor may be used in their, on their head. They must be holy until the period of their dedication to the Lord is over. They must let their hair grow long. Throughout their, the period of their dedication to the Lord, the Nazarite must not go near a dead body. Even if their own father or mother or brother or sister dies, they must not make themselves ceremonially unclean on account of them, because the symbol of their dedication to God is on their head. Throughout the period of their dedication, they are consecrated to the Lord. If someone dies suddenly in the, Nazar in the Nazarite's presence, Thus defiling the hair that symbolizes their dedication, they must shave their head on the seventh day, the day of their cleansing. Then on the eighth day, they must bring two doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The priest is to offer one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to make atonement for the Nazarite because they sinned by being in the presence of the dead body. The same day, they are to consecrate their head again. They must rededicate themselves to the Lord for the same period of dedication. They must bring a year-old male lamb as a guilt offering. The previous days do not count because they became defiled during their period of dedication. Now this is the law of the Nazarite when period of their dedication is over. They are to be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting. There they are to present their offering to the Lord, a year-old male lamb without defect for a burnt offering. A year old ewe lamb without defect for a sin offering, a ram without defect for a fellowship offering, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, and a basket of bread made with the finest flour and without yeast, thick loaves with olive oil mixed in, and thin loaves brushed with olive oil. The priest is to present all these before the Lord and make the sin offering and the burnt offering. He is to present the basket of unleavened bread and is to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to the Lord, together with its grain offering and drink offering. Then at the entrance of the tent of meeting, the Nazarite must shave off the hair that symbolizes their dedication. They are to take the hair and put it in the fire that is under the sacrifice of the fellowship offering. After the Nazarite has shaved off the hair that symbolizes their dedication, the priest is to place in their hands a boiled shoulder of the ram and one thick loaf and one thin loaf from the basket, both made without yeast. The priest shall then wave these before the Lord as a wave offering. They are holy and belong to the priest, together with the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows offerings to the Lord in accordance with their dedication. In addition to whatever else they can afford. They must fulfill the vows they have made according to the law of the Nazarite. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Chapter 7 When Moses finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it and all its furnishings. He also anointed and consecrated the altar and all its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of families, who were the tribal leaders in charge of those who were counted, made offerings. They brought as their gifts before the Lord six covered carts and twelve oxen, an ox from each leader and cart from every two. These they presented before the tabernacle. The Lord said to Moses, Accept these from them, that they may be used in the work as the tent of meeting. Give them to the Levites as each man's work requires. So Moses took the carts and oxen and gave them to the Levites. 
he gave two carts and four oxen to the Gershonites as their work required. And he gave four carts and eight oxen to the Merorites as their work required. They all were under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest. But Moses did not give any to the Kohathites because they were to carry on their shoulders the holy things for which they were responsible. When the altar was anointed, the leaders brought their offerings for its dedication and presented them before the altar. For the Lord had said to Moses, each day one leader is to bring his offering for the dedication of the altar. The one who brought his offering on the first day was Nashan, Nashan son of Aminadab of the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old, for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nashon, son of Aminadab. On the second day, Nath it's not Nathan Nathaniel, it's Nathaniel, son of Zuar, the son, the leader of Issachar, brought his offering. The offering he brought was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old for burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nathanael, son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, son of Halon, the, son, the leader of the people of Zebulun, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old, for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five, five rams, five male goats, and the five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliab, son of Halon. On the fourth day, Elzer, son of Shadur, the leader of the people of Reuben, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliezer, son of Shador. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, son of Zerishadai, the son of the people, of, leader of the people of Simeon, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for burnt offering, one male goat for sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, 
five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Shel Shelemiel, son, son of Zerish Zerishadai. On the sixth day, Eli Eliasaph, son of du Deol, the, the leader of the people of Gad, <clears throat> brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, <clears throat> one young bull, one ram and one male lamb a year old for burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old, <clears throat> sorry, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering Elias, Eli, Elisef, son of Duel, on the seventh day, Elishema, son of Amahud, the leader of the people of Ephraim, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old, for burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. And this was the offering of Elishema, son of Amehud. It's a very hard name to say, sorry. <clears throat> On the eighth day, Gamaliel, son of Hadazur, the leader of the people of Manasseh brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel. Each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old, to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the off offering of Gamaliel, son of Pedazur. On the ninth day, Abadan, son of Gideoni, the leader of the people of Benjamin, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. And this was the offering of Abadan, son of Gideoni. On the tenth day, ah Ahizer, son of Amishadai, the leader of the people of Dan, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver Sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel. Each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, and one male lamb. A year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering. And two oxen, five rams five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of 
Ahizer, son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Hegel, son of Okran, the leader of the people of Asher, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, the two oxen and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Hagiel, son of Okran. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enan, the leader of the people of Naphtali, brought his offering. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Ahira, son of Enam. These were the offerings of the Israelite leaders of the dedication of the altar when it was anointed. Twelve silver plates, twelve silver sprinkling bowls, and twelve gold dishes. Each silver plate weighed 130 shekels and each sprinkling bowl 70 shekels. Altogether, the silver dishes weighed about 2,400 shekels according to the sanctuary shekel. The 12 gold dishes filled with incense weigh 10 shekels each, according to the sanctuary shekel. Although the gold dishes weighed altogether, the gold dishes weighed 120 shekels. The total number of animals for the burnt offering came to 12 young bulls, 12 rams, and 12 male lambs a year old, together with their grain offering. 12 male goats were used for the sin offering. The total number of animals for the sacrifice of the fellowship came to 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 male lambs a year old. They were the offerings for the dedication of the altar after it was anointed. When Moses entered the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from behind the two cherubim above the atonement cover of the on the Ark of the Covenant in law. In this way, the Lord spoke to him. Now we're going to go to chapter 8. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and say to him, When you set up the lamps, See that all seven light up the area in front of the lampstand. Aaron did so. He set up the lamps so that they faced forward on the lampstand, just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is how the lampstand was made. It was made of hammered gold from the, its base to its blossoms. The lampstand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord had shown Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Take the Levites from among all the Israelites and make them ceremonially clean. To purify them, do this. Sprinkle the water of cleansing on them. Then have them shave their whole bodies and wash their clothes, and so they will purify themselves. Have them take a young bull with its grain offering of the first flour of the finest flour mixed with olive oil. Then you are to take a second young bull for a sin offering. Bring the Levites to the front of the tent of meeting and assemble the whole Israelite community. You are to bring the Levites before, before the Lord, and the Israelites are to say, or are to lay their hands on them. Aaron is to present the Levites before the Lord, 
as a wave offering from the Israelites so that they may be ready to do the work of the Lord. Then the Levites are to lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, using one for a sin offering to the Lord and the other for a burnt offering to make atonement for the Levites. Have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and then present them as a wave offering to the Lord. In this way, you are to set the Levites apart from the other Israelites and the Levites will be mine. After you have purified the Levites and presented them as a wave offering, they are to come to do their work at the tent of meeting. They are the Israelites who are to be given holy to me. I have taken them as my own in place of the firstborn, the first male offspring from every Israelite woman. Every firstborn male in Israel, whether human or animal, is mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set them apart for myself. And I have taken the Levites in place of the firstborn sons in Israel. From among all the Israelites, I have given the Levites as gifts to Aaron and his sons to do the work at the tent of meeting on behalf of the Israelites and to make atonement for them so that no plague will strike the Israelites when they go near the sanctuary. Moses, Aaron, and the whole Israelite community did with the Levites just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Levites purified themselves and washed their clothes. Then Aaron presented them as a wave offering before the Lord and made atonement for them to purify them. After that, the, Lev the Levites came to do their work at the tent of meeting under the supervision of Aaron and his sons. They did with the Levites just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, this applies to the Levites. Men 25 years or more shall come to take part in the work at the tent of meeting. But at the age of 50, they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, but they themselves must not do the work. This then is how you are to assign the responsibilities of the Levites. Chapter 9. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover. And they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses, but some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonial, ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, we have become unclean because of a dead body, but should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover. But they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially un, ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the, the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. On the day of on the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up, the clouds covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from the tent, 
from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the clouds settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out. At his command, they encamped. As long as the clouds stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Chapter 10, we're only going to do 11 chapters. So after this, we'll do one more. The Lord said to Moses, make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for calling the community together and for having the camp set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the, the leaders, the head of the clans of Israel are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out. <clears throat> to, gather the, <clears throat> to gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron and priests are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle, your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord and your God and rescued from your enemies. Although at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals and new moon feasts, you are to sound trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord, your God. On the 20th day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They set out this time, they set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first under their standard Nahashon, son of Aminadab, was in command. Nathaniel, son of Zuar, was over the division of the tribe of Ishakar. And El Eliab, son of Halon, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and Merorites who, who carried it set out. The divisions of the camp of Reuben went next, under their standard Elizur, son of Shadur, was in command. Uh, Shelemiel, son of Zerishadai, was over the division of the tribe of Simeon. And El Eliasif, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kohathites set out carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. The division of the camp of Ephraim went next under their standard Elishama, son of Amahud, was in command. Gamaliel, son of Pedazur, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh. And Abadan, son of Gideonai, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard for all the units, the divisions of the camp of Dan set out under, this, under their standard. Um, Ahazer, son of Amishadai, was in command. Degil, son of Okran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher. 
And Ahira, son of Enan, was over the division of the tribe of Nef Neftali. This was the order of march to the Israelite divisions as they set out. Now Moses said to Ho Hobab, son of Ruel, the, Mid the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things to Israel. He answered, no, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled three, for three days and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the Ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, Lord, may your enemies be scattered, may your foes be, flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, Lord, to the counties, to the countless thousands of, Is of Israel. Chapter 11. Now the people complained about their hardships in the, hear in the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. So that place was called Tabera because fire from the Lord had burned.